In this podcast episode, we're thrilled to welcome Ben Schwinn, the mind behind Portal CX. Ben's unique all-in-one platform is reshaping customer experience with features like real-time updates, smooth communication, and customizable tracking portals. Discover how Portal CX is changing the way businesses, just like yours, manage customer relations. Tune in for a new perspective on transforming customer interactions and why Portal CX is essential for companies looking to upgrade their customer service approach. All right, everybody, welcome to a very special edition of the One SEO podcast. I'm Bernie O'Little, the Vice President of Special Operations, and I am joined today by the one and only Mr. Ben Schwen. Ben, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you doing, Bernie? Never had a bad day in my life, man, especially when I get to talk to guys like you. Nice. Yeah, dude. Um, so we met at RoofCon, and, uh, yeah. so, um, and you are a, uh, you know, I, well, you're a very unique person in the, uh, the roofing space because you're providing some solutions that aren't usually typically available, right? Right. Yeah. So tell yeah, me. We, uh, uh, okay. Be, being a software guy in, in the blue collar roofing space, you know, there's there's a bridge to gap there, but uh, it's nice. It's nice. It's refreshing, to be honest. So. Yeah, I uh, I bet. Well, you know, those guys, roofers, they get hit all the time by software companies, especially like guys like me, marketing companies, not me specifically, but, you know, other people. So they get a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of noise, obviously, in this, the home service space in general, but especially when it comes to things like roofing. Tell everybody out there about, you know, Portal CX and kind of what, why it's not noise, why it's like a viable solution for that market. Right. Um, so one, we're pretty unique in, in the, in the roofing market. Um, we're in roofing solar typically. Um, Portal CX is an all-in-one customer experience platform. Um, and when we're talking about customer experience. We're talking about customer journey, um, uh, different calls to action, automation, personalization, um, and, uh, you know, even customer support, customer service, all baked in. Um, Portal CX, uh, what it does is you basically give yourself a way to map out your, your process, your customer journey, and uh, plug it into your CRM and your customers or any real stakeholders on your projects are going to be getting automated notifications, email, SMS, um, those notifications deliver a customized project portal for, for that project and for that customer or stakeholder. Yeah. And in there, they can see where they're at, where they're going. We're basically the Domino's pizza tracker for home services. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So... So that's that's kind of the foundation of, of what we offer. Um, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's that's the uh, most simple way I could describe it. So nice. Portal CX, a, a portal into your customer experience, and then we also have a you know customer portal that you get. So it's a little stuff on top of there. Yeah, man. What? Why is it in? Okay. So the Domino's Pizza Tracker, everybody loves the Domino's Pizza Tracker. Everybody loves watching their Uber Eats or their Grubhub or whatever it is. Um, we need that now because we need to know when our cheeseburger is going to get to our house, right? Why do people, right. why is it important for like, like, I don't know, let's just pick a roofer down the street here in Philly or a solar guy who's knocking doors out in Salt Lake City. Why is it important for someone like that to engage with someone like you and with Portal CF? Right. So the, um, you got a little barking at I've got a golden retriever. Yeah, I think someone might be dropping something off at my porch. So it's fine. Um, yeah. So the the way we came up with this actually is I, I uh, built a door to door CRM prior to this. Um, that's I'd, I've been in the space about seven years because of that. Um, and uh, so it was a door knocking plus CRM tool um, that I had built uh, and sold that company last June. Um, but as I was building that, uh, we, we saw big uh, cancellations really was the biggest driver. We saw a huge amount of cancellations for our customers. Um, you know, our solar customers specifically, not so much on the roofing side, but, um, on the, on the solar customers specifically, we saw a huge cancellation rate. We, uh, you know, I thought we need something to solve this. I thought about building a feature onto the CRM that was just some basic text and email updates to the customers. A lot of CRMs have that these days. Um, but 
we thought about the idea more and my co-founder Holden Jasper, who's our CEO, um, he was going through a real bad pain point. It was right around this time before Christmas, uh, about three years ago. And, uh, his wife left the tub on and flooded his whole house. And, um, and it, he, he had just moved into, into his house. It was, uh, he had to deal with all these different contractors, people coming by, all this stuff. He didn't know what was going on, what was happening. And so Holden had worked with me at that, on that previous company. And we brought up the idea a few times. And, and when that happened to him, he's like, he's like, I think it, it would be better to have this as a standalone business. Um, you know, its own product offering that's just focused on that customer experience, bringing all the stakeholders, communication and tracking together. Um, and then we can plug that into any CRM, any, any type of home services company could use us. We're actually going to be specific to solar like my CRM was. Um, and, uh, because, you know, any customer journey that lasts longer than, you know, maybe, you know, a few days to a week, you know, people do tend to get a little antsy about what's happening with it. Yeah. Particularly in home services, because the prices are so, uh, you know, like the, the cost of things for your home are, are typically higher than most other things. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, we, what we did is we plugged it into my CRM, um, to prove the concept out. So right out of the gates, we had some paying customers and, um, and uh, what we did is we ran it for 90 days. So we saw the cancellation rate, and this is solar specifically. We saw the cancellation rate um, of, of these different companies that we had worked with. We actually had two solar companies, one Windows company um, that, that used it. And the previous 90 days, we had a cancellation rate of 32%, 28%. The other one had a pretty low cancellation rate, about 14%. I was a, I was a windows company. So it wasn't, you know, it's not really doing those, but so on the solar company specifically, um, after we plugged it in, we let it run for 90 days where they, all they were doing was project managers in the CRM were doing the same thing. They were normally doing, just moving the account down the pipeline, you know, and, and whatever they needed to do, they didn't change their process at all. And that's, that's one of the big selling points of this is we plug it in, you set up your template in our system, and then the rest is handed for you. You don't have to change your process at all. And so over the next 90 days, we went and checked that data again on the CRM and the solar company that was at 32%, I think went down to 18%. Well, and then the solar company that was at 28% went down to like, or sorry, the 32% went down to, to, uh, it, I think it was 21% and then the 28% went down to 18%. Okay. So, so we saw about a 20% ish, uh, drop in cancellation, uh, rates from those companies after just plugging this in. And this was our, our base base product. I mean, all they did was get a text and email and, you know, a, a small customer portal that just gave them kind of that Domino's pizza tracker, like experience saying, Oh, Hey, you're on this stage now. Oh, you moved to the next stage. And, you know, you could kind of define what those stages said, but even back then we just kind of did it for our customers, you know? And so we have a lot more customization, personalization behind creating that experience now. But even back then, um, we saw, you know, a, a kind of a, across the board, we're like, okay, I think we have a solid idea here. I think we've got something here. And so we kept working on it, got some more customers and, um, the beginning of this year, we, uh, started to reach out for investors and we've got, uh, we were able to get 750 K in funding, pre-seed funding for, for building the product out and, and try to establish more product market fit direction and, and everything. And we feel like we're in a really good place. We're going to, we're planning on raising another round next year. We've got, a, a quite a few more customers now and we're just going out. So. Probably an easy sell, right? When you can show people that they're going to cut their cancellation rates like in half on big projects, whether they do with solar, huh? Yeah. So specifically in solar, that's that's been big. Some solar companies are like, hey, we don't really have problems with cancellation. And, and that's fine. They're, some of them, you know, pay people. But at scale, you know, a lot of these companies that say that are typically kind of smart. So 
yeah. once you start hitting 250 to 500 to over a thousand installs a month or, or something, you're, you're going to be dealing with a lot more because you can't control every piece of the pie as well. You can't control what the sales rep is saying as much. You can't control. Right. And so our idea is, you know, as soon as, as soon as you have that first interaction with the sales rep, you know, portal CX should handle that customer experience yeah. from there. Right. Yeah. So you plug it right in. That, I mean, that's, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just think that, um, yeah, there's like, you know, a lot of different ways that home service companies kind of think about um, growing their businesses, right? And uh, it's a lot of times you hear it's just sales, leads, that kind of thing. The retention side, too, obviously, frame it is to repeat stuff like an HVAC company is a comfort plan. But, you know, I had a lot of conversations personally with people like you that also offer solutions, that also offer solutions to the industry. Cancellations and kind of preventing that churn on the back end is a pretty significant portion, you know, of how a company does right of their bottom line. No, right, yeah, yeah. So cancellations, but the the other part is cutting cutting into the support costs. Yeah, um, customers call in less when they see their full journey. They can see sales reps are notoriously bad at educating customers, right? Um, and then, you know, project managers are so overwhelmed constantly with, with everything as well as customer service, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to have to hire like, oh, for every, uh, if we're doing five new, you know, eight customers a month on average, we have to go pay someone 40 grand a year to, to, to just keep people up to date, you know, tell people where their permits are, tell people what's going on with the insurance company the adjuster or whatever it is. Um, and so we're, we're still trying to quantify it. The cancellation rate was easy to quantify. We're still trying to work on it, quantifying exactly how much reduction of support costs we're thinking at least around 17% out of the gates. We have some new features coming out that uh, have to do with two-way communication between sales rep, project manager, customer, any project owner. Um, we've done some other things on here, like you can add subscribers to a project. And so let's say a husband and wife both want the updates, both want everything. It's nice. kind of like the DoorDash group order. I don't know if you've used that on like DoorDash, the group order. Piece. Yeah, I'm familiar. Uh, yeah, so it's just like that. Um, and so there's other things we're doing to kind of alleviate that. Really what it is is it, you're, you're not only, you know, reduction cancellation is easy to quantify, but then there's the support costs, there is the brand awareness, and then there's reviews and referrals, which are huge in this business, right? And I mean, I've talked to some companies that are, that are nationwide that haven't even, haven't even started doing digital ads or, or real sales yet because all of their customers have just come from referrals, just so many referrals. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and that's something maybe me and you could talk about offline. I have a have a customer we've been talking to that are just trying to launch into to nice. digital ads, um, and they're huge. So, um, but but yeah, I mean, essentially, that's the that's the gist of it. Is you know, when, when you have this this customized project portal, you can add calls to actions like leave a review, leave a referral that are triggered at very specific times either through text or email or within the portal when you're on a specific stage, you can, you know, hey, refer a friend here, you know, installation complete or something. Hey, we're excited. We, we completed your installation. Um, you know, go ahead and snap some photos and, and refer a friend and we'll give you a $500 if they decide to get in the new roof or new, sh new shingles, new solar, new, new windows, whatever that is. Um, and then we act as a repository for those reviews and referrals. And um, you can you know, post those out and do whatever you want. So, so if I get referred by, let's say, uh, Jill over here, to someone that's using it uh, from the roofing side, it's uh, I jump in, I can then see all the reviews from that company in the actual app itself. Right? That's being a repository? Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. all. What? Choose well, to, uh, to Google as well. Um, okay. Yeah. So you can even have a Google link straight, straight to your, you know, Google my business, you know, as a call to action, very customizable call to action links here. We have, um, there's some other stuff where we have on our pipeline, um, when it comes to building forms, customized forms that just can handle whatever you want to handle. Um, and then a lot more around 
um, recording and showing, you know, open rates of what, you know, how many people are opening your emails or looking at the portal or reading the text or opting out of your text or, um, you know, giving you reviews, what's your average NPS score for how long a project is taking, you know, all this stuff around your customer experience. We want to be your main platform for it. Ben, so you're, you're, you're really just enhancing the customer experience and right. You're just yeah. optimizing it completely by, from a bunch of different facets, kind of like a, it's like a holistic approach to it. It sounds like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it, the, uh, to, to talk about Jeff Bezos a little bit, I know he probably gets proud of a lot or whatever, but nope. I mean, Jeff Bezos, I'm just uh, okay. <laughs> Amazon, the, the, the guy that founded Amazon, <laughs> he, he's so, so customer focused. And that's the thing about the home services industry. It's very customer focused I and mean, on every aspect of it, it's all, it, it, they have to be right. These are people's homes. Right. And, and so. You know, it's it's something that is personal to them. It's you know they get very invested financially, even emotionally. You know all that, and um, and so to quote Jeff Bezos, the best customer service is when the customer doesn't have to call you, it doesn't have to talk to you, it just works, right? And look at what Amazon's done with their customer experience. As an Amazon customer, I have my tracker. I'm getting updated. I know where everything is, how it got there. Everything is quick, efficient, and easy. People are used to that. They're used to the Domino's Pizza Tracker. You know, Domino's Pizza Tracker killed killed pizza or whatever, right? Um, and so we want to we want to kill home services with this and. Um, you know, a lot of it, uh, our next round of funding is going into some AI stuff that we're planning on doing, um, um, you know, just when it comes to personalization as well as chat and support, things like that. Um, and as well as some business intelligence as aspects of it, like I talked about with the uh, reporting, being able to, you know, say, oh, okay, well, if I... If I increase my average project time, my NPS store score could go up by, you know, a few points or whatever. Yeah. Uh, things like that. And that data is super valuable, not just for the, obviously for the business owner, right? But for the people that support them in other areas, right? You send that to your financial guy, you send that to your marketing company, right? You send that to your head of sales. That way you like, you, you have a better picture and understanding of what needs to happen in your business and not other people who are smarter than you in certain areas that you've hired to help support you can function at a much higher level, right? With that kind of insight and information. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How many, how many, uh, in, in terms of like the, t I'm kind of hung up because I think it's awesome um, in terms of the, the streamlining of the communication because nobody likes it when somebody sells something and it's bullshit. The customer didn't understand it. Right. So now you have to, you deal with all these phone calls, all these emails, these chats, you got this nervous person. You just feel bad for them because it's like, dude, I'm so sorry you're in this situation. How many, and that's a big headache to relieve for everybody involved in any project. Um, how many, do you know how many touch points it typically is for a project who's not using portal CX from the time of the sale to the time of the, the final product being, uh, the being a project completed. Yeah. That's a, that's a good question. We've asked a few customers that, um, you know, there's, I've heard answers all across the board, um, because a, a lot of people aren't really tracking this, you know, that that's, that's another problem. That's a problem. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we've heard answers across the board, like, you know, on average, someone, you know, a customer service agent or project manager might have to you know, from the customer itself, you know, maybe six to 14 calls on, uh, you know, throughout, throughout day, uh, the life cycle of the customer from the welcome call to letting them know someone's coming over for the installation to letting them know the permits were completed to, uh, you know, all of these different things, but there's not only that, there's the other stakeholders involved. Um, and, and that's why we work pretty good with some of these other types of verticals, like custom construction, um, where the investor, the contractor and the customer are all getting their own personal on his project portal for this one project you're running through your CRM. Yeah. And so you can customize these different templates in our system, uh, that allow you to, to have these different, you know, customer journeys that you've built out and mapped out. 
And then you just plug those into that one project you have going in your CRM and everyone's getting what they need and update it on this nice view of that, that, uh, you know, is familiar to them with the progress bar stages and contact and, you know, things like that. So, uh, but yeah, that, that is a great question. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of folks aren't really tracking that they're not really tracking. That, so. Yeah, I guess. I, well, number one, that's something they should definitely take a look at um, in terms of just like understanding like the flow of their business and how the projects go. But with something like a template, like you're talking about. So if I'm, you know, Bernie's roofing company, and I'm talking to, you know, Susie, who's going to buy a roof from me. I know that I have a template for a workflow, even that it could function to support, right? For an installation, or I can have, if I'm doing commercial too, maybe like a flat roof, I don't know if it's all residential or not, or like any kind of shingle stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a different template for every different type of process you have. Um, even we even have ones for internal sales reps because, in regards to CRMs, you know, a lot of a lot of sales reps don't really don't really understand how to use a lot of the 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 bigger CRMs out there, um, like a Salesforce. And then on top of that, it's like two hundred fifty dollars a user just so sales reps can log in and see where their project's at. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and so we do have, you know, te- out of the box templates that we have. They're AI generated using, using chat GPT on the back end. Um, and, uh, so we have internal sales rep templates for the different verticals that we support. And so you can plug in the internal sales rep template. So, uh, you know, right in that same pipeline, your magic with the customers so and sales reps didn't get on certain touch points. Letting the sales rep know, oh, hey, this is where our project is. You can also, it links up with your email so you can see a running list of different projects from the project portal. So if you have multiple projects going, which a lot of customers do in some of these verticals, um, you have multiple projects going, we, you know, you can click on the uh, little button to see a random list of projects. It tells you the progress of each of your projects and what stage they're in. Um, uh, we also, yeah, we have we have other things like an authentication that you can enable to disable. Some people don't care about authentication. Some people require it because they, they might be sharing um, some of the photos and attachments and and uh, you know sensitive documents with the customer through that. Um, and so we've really kind of thought through, you know, any any sort of way that our product could be used. Um, and, and this is really, it's, it's not that we've thought through it. It's been working through customer with customers, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, from day one, we had paying customers and these were customers that were already customers of my previous platform I was building. And, and so, you know, being able to talk directly with them, just taking all of their ideas, everything they're, they're talking about, we just, we're a direct conduit to, to build them. And that's, we're a customer experience platform. So if we don't provide the best customer experience to our customers, you know, then who are we, right? Yeah. So we need to, we need to be that show and start how we do that. Our customers really do love us. They, um, they love that they get to work directly with the founders. A lot of the time we, you know, I get, I give out my personal phone number to them probably a little too much. Um, and, uh, but, but it's, I love it. It's, that's the best part of my job. Yeah, it's a, well, you guys have a, it's a really cool product and it's something that's not, um, not, you're on another level, you know what I mean, than some of the other people that might be kind of similar. And you, like I said, you have that kind of holistic thing um, going into it, which is a solution that uh, people need, right? Turnkey, whatever you want to call it, where it's like, we're, we're taking care of everything for you over here. There's accountability for the sales reps. It's a good data point for you. It's a functioning CRM. It's a way for your customers to kind of keep up with the status of projects. So the, 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 the end goal here or the next step for portal CX aside from obviously more customer acquisition and growth is what? Um, well, our, uh, I've kind of touched on this a little bit, but we're raising some money, uh, Q1. Um, we have certain commitments uh, already and that's really going to be going into a lot of some of the things I've been talking about as far as centralizing more of the communication and two way, uh, more like three way communication, you know, between the sales rep, the project donors and the customers and yep. really what we're calling them the stakeholders. Anyone who's a stakeholder on a project, being able to, you know, communicate straight from our platform, being able to send it as a text message or an email, 
whatever. If the customer would rather just respond on text, come through here, sales rep can respond, project owners can respond. A lot of those customer support features. Um, and then on top of that is the AI uh, aspects of the business, which is um, we, we want to be able to personalize your customer journey for you with just asking you a few questions, right? Um, okay, what vertical are you in? How many customers do you typically serve? What's your average project like? Um, you know, do you install or do you do sales or both? Just a few questions and then we can spit out um, a full template of what's your website domain. That's another thing. So that we can go into your website, grab your logo, grab your color schema, just personalize everything for you. So it's a few clicks, a few questions, few answers, and boom, your whole customer journey is mapped out or your whole project journey is mapped out. And then on top of that, it would be AI chatbots, being able to learn from your, you know, your project manager's responses and then be able to, you know, give quick responses to your customers for you. So you're feeling a lot more of those basic calls. Oh, how long, how long until a light, my permit is done? Well, typically what we've seen with so-and-so solar is, yeah. um, you know, this can, this stage can, you could be in this stage for up to, you know, one week or something, whatever, up to a few days, whatever it is. Um, if you have any more questions, you know, I'll reply this, right? Mm -hmm. So things like that around, around that. And then, um, another aspect of the AI is business intelligence. So it'd be a lot more around reporting and being able to do predictive analytics on, you know, what you could potentially do to get more, to get higher reviews, to get more referrals, to, to grow your business that way. Um, and so that's really what we're going to be focusing on over the next few years. Nice, man. I think that's awesome. And in terms of like uh, how people can find you guys or if they want to learn more about Portal CX, what should they do? Yeah, our website's a really good way to do that. Um, we even have a free trial. We're transparent about everything. Uh, none of our competitors are transparent about their pricing. We are. Um, we also allow for free trials. We allow for everything. Again, we want people to go in there, try it out. We want to talk to them. We want to figure out, you know, what their needs are. Um, so portalcx.com. And then if you want, uh, you know, click on how it works. That's a good spot to start from. From there, you can actually put in some of you, you know, put in your name, email, phone number, and then you can get an experience like your customer would get. So you'll get a text and email with your own customer portal that you can click on and it kind of takes you through our own sales process. Okay. So fr from that customer portal, you can book a demo. It goes into our system where we're able to reach out to you and whatever. So our, how it works page is really good. Um, and, uh, yeah, our pricing is there. Um, and we also have a blog that we keep up to date a lot. What I've learned most recent post was all about AI and how that's going to, you know, how, how that interacts with the, the customer the CX realm and customer experience realm. Um, and I know you guys are doing, you know, quite a bit with the AI stuff at a two. Yeah. I was going to say, that's another, that's the next step for, uh, for us, the, the webinar that CD is going to have for, uh, for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, man. Cool. Uh, well, you know, dude, it was great. It's been great getting to know you since RoofCon and everything about Portal CX listening to you guys have, um, anything you want to leave the people out there with? Is there anything that you want to kind of say? Um, yeah, I mean, go to portalcx.com. Uh, give us, give it a yeah, free trial. Go and sign up for a free trial there um, and try it out. Um, I was going to have a, a little ebook that someone could download, but it's really just based on our blogs there. So if you click on company and blog and see our blogs, follow us on social media. We're on all the different social media platforms. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, Portal CX is on the customer retention, support, and everything side. But to, all, to everyone listening, if you don't use one SEO already, use one SEO on, yeah. and customer, you know, attaining customers on your side, re retaining customers on our side. We can work together as a really good solution. That's incredible. I I get it now. Why you're uh, why you're so successful? That's awesome, dude. Listen, brother, it's been great having you here. Um, it's good to bring my audience uh, just some good quality content and somebody that's got a solid solution for them that like, truly is different from anything else that's out there. So I encourage all you guys, check out Ben and his team. Go to portalcx.com. Go, like, literally go through the experience that these guys have and see what they're all about. 
Um, but Ben, just one more time, brother, thank you so much for joining us today. And everybody out there, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Bernie.